but that was really surprised. So you got that, that came from him that size? Yeah. Yeah. That I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Whoa, dude. On the rare rainy day in Los Angeles, there's not much to do. The freeways are packed, packed. nobody seems to know how to drive, but I decided to go ahead and connect with my buddy, Selegna Soul, and brave the crazy traffic and cross town to go show you guys this incredible, well-built, and extremely high-tech greenhouse. Rainy day in LA, let's go. Um, David Valera, AKA Selegna Soul, and this is my greenhouse, welcome. So are we are in his, what I have to say uh, is a state-of-the-art greenhouse here. The first time that I came by to see this, I was pretty surprised at the, uh, the level of engineering that has gone into this thing. So I wanted to uh, link up with him today. And uh, I figured, it, you know, rainy days and cactus typically don't go that well together. Um, but I figured... Why not get together and take a look at a, at a nice dry spot in the rain, which is a greenhouse. And uh, David could kind of share with us what he's got going on. We'll take a look at his collection. So what do you have going on over here, man? Well, this is kind of one of the reasons why I built a greenhouse was because of rainy days like this and uh, super sunny and scorching days that we usually have here in Los Angeles. Uh, a lot of my stuff used to be outside on benches yeah and I would have to rotate them and move them and you know just do a ton of work um, getting them out of the Sun or getting them out of the rain so a few a few months of that and business and I decided that I needed to build something for all my plants and my collection so this is this is what I came up with. I did the design and did most of the building. I had a lot of help with the with the foundation and the structure, but uh, yeah. It, so I, what did you do for the foundation? Um, so a lot of it was excavated. There used to be a huge, like, eighty year old Nopalis uh, here in the corner that I had to remove, and then because the the landscape, the backyard kind of slopes down, I had to even it out level it out and then dig about 18 inches to run the um, foundation gotcha. uh, for the structure which is it's it's a combination of cement and um, um, treated wood okay PT uh, and then I just built everything else the superstructure is PT and then everything else is uh, redwood for the shelving and uh, the uprights basically and so you've got you've got uh, electrical out here mm-hmm yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about like what you're running, because I noticed right now you've got some grow lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the grow lights are, these are Sensei grow lights, uh, 70 watt grow lights, and I actually just added uh, more down below for my seedlings that you could see down there. Um, but it was one of these uh, afterthoughts of adding electric electricity to the structure. I didn't think I was going to need it but then I'm kind of glad I did because I'm able to extend the the day by a couple of hours during um, the winter months and the fall months like this do like you find that the greenhouse is getting less sunlight than it normally would in, in the summer definitely I mean it's it is southward facing but um, as the Sun is much lower in the sky it, it goes behind a lot of the trees that we have in the yard here gotcha. and so just keeping keeping everything growing and keeping everything a little bit more healthy i also have um thermostats and climate control in here even though this is a, this isn't it kind of was designed as not a fully enclosed greenhouse right. uh the back is open this is kind of lean to to my um neighbor's uh garage and then the sides are open back on this side oh gotcha yeah on this side because that's just a fence back there so during the summer months, it gets a lot of airflow, and that's when I added the, the Schaefer fan and then the exhaust fan, which is run by solar power. Um, nice. So it just gets a little bit of a cross breeze during the summer months and allows, allows the camp, you know, the guys to breathe uh, instead of being really stale into this little, little spot. Yeah, definitely. So it was like an eight by 16 and a half structure, which I thought was gonna be 
<laughs> big enough. But as you can see, it's uh, it's it gets quite full, full quick, man. It, got it gets full, full quick. really quick, especially when you, you yeah, know, you've got pots on on pots. <laughs> But stage plants being used as staging rocks. Yeah, when, when you use like, you know, you, I collect a lot of um, pots from a bunch of friends. You know, Cactus Cult Ceramics and Robert's Pots and um, Variegated Troy. And then this one, this is actually one of the first ones that I made. Uh, uh, Automata. Nice. You, you know, when you start trying to display them in a way where it looks kind of good and cool instead of out of the plastic pots, they do take up a lot more space. Um, oh yeah. So I mean these thing these two um, shelves I added later on. So yeah, I remember the first time I came, you didn't have them, and I feel like you sent pictures and you were adding in a second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I remember that. So how did you get into collecting plants in the first place, and how long have you been doing it? Uh, I always was around plants. My mom got me into plants. I helped her garden, and she was really into succulents um, from the get go. Uh, I grew up in Silver Lake, not too far from here, and basically everything kind of died besides the succulents. But um, when we were kids, she would take us to Disneyland and SeaWorld and all these amusement parks. And little did I know that she was a professional propagator because she would go to the gardens there and with a pair of scissors in her purse, she would snip <laughs> off um, pieces of the plants and then propagate them in her yard. So basically everything in my parents' yard is is uh, <laughs> propagated uh, rare succulents, and so that's kind of how I got into it. And then when I bought my first house uh, out in Pasadena, everything was like camellias and azaleas, and then I soon realized that I can't keep any of those things alive. They just burn and die. Move everything into agaves and aloes, and then really, you know, to tell you the truth. Because I, I built this about three years ago, but it was mostly during the pandemic that I started getting really into like more and more of the like everybody else, the right? Cac more of the cactus and the spiny, rare things like um, Areocarpus and um, you know Turbini carpus and Aztecians and things yeah, like I that. So because I know you and I have like uh, some very similar tastes. Like you've got some gorgeous areas. This thing right here, man. A little pygmy retusis. Yeah, that's probably the rarest one that I have here. And uh, I talked to Woody uh, about that plant, and there's not there's only a handful of those that exist. So we're trying to figure out if we could get them to flower and start propagating these guys. But that'd be really awesome if we can, because they're super rare. Yeah, for sure. I bought one, and then uh, it died before I uh, ever watered it. Yeah. You know, I don't think, I don't, who knows, man, some things just, uh, they just have a mind of their own. Yeah, They're for sure. Set, set to die. So you got little Geo Antonias in there. Dude, this is crazy. Yeah. Is that grass? No, nope. it's on its own roots. It's a uh, cespitosa. That's awesome. Uh, Strombo. Very nice, dude. And then. Strombo cactus discoformis. Yeah. And then you'll see, like, I, I added a precision uh, 45 gallon. Um, sprayer because okay. I hand I hand water everything right, and so I that's that usually goes on top of a uh, ATV that people use farmers use. So I converted the DC into an AC uh, adapter, which is all this stuff right here, nice. cigarette lighter, uh, and then that runs the pump. Oh, sweet! Yeah, so that just pumps it, and I could fill it up with like fertilizer or amendments and things like that, and hand spray everything. Now, do are you have you found pests uh, to be a very big issue, and if so, which ones, and what have you done to? The, you know, everybody battles mealies. Um, that's our, that, that is our favorite. Um, but usually, I try to keep new plants quarantined and keep it to a minimum. Um, but the nice thing about having a, conf a, a smaller space like this, I can go through um, my collection and make sure that everything's sort of clean. Yeah, the adenias seem to get mites, which is a bummer because they just destroy those leaves. Um, but these ones are still um, leafed out and they're still doing well. But oh, nice. um, now, are these yeah, are these tree. sitting on heat mats at all, or are they? No, no. The everything's the only thing that's on heat mats are the seedlings. The seedlings that I have down, down below. below. Okay. Yeah, but everything else is sort of like uh, on its just on on the redwood shelving. 
I do have a thermostat. Um, um, I'm using the BioGreen uh, thermostat, and that runs this small little heater to the right of the um, the tank. Right here. And that's rated between 120 to 150 um, feet that it can warm to to temperature. Nice, man. Well, it's always good too when it's raining. It is. It's always a little bit. Seems like it's a little bit less cold anyway. Uh, I try to keep things um, like at night above forty-eight degrees, fifty degrees during the winter time. So. Yeah, that is that is really nice. Yeah, because during that whole um, Blando kerfuffle, I uh, I did not get any of them. <laughs> I was I was definitely bummed, dude. I didn't get any plants. Um, whew. One of the more unusual ones is this diobata that I think it was it was damaged with sun and then just this year it started dichotomizing like nice, that. Nice, so dude. Yeah, splitting. that thing will do uh, amazing things in the coming years for sure. Dude, this is ridiculous too. Yeah, that's that's grafted. Okay. That one's grafted. Who cares? I mean, dude, really, yeah, honestly. they look cool. It's a hidden graft. So this mellow, that mama mellow, is the the mom for all the seedlings of the mel cactus on the right hand side that nice. I've been growing. How long have you been doing stuff from seed? Uh, for about two, two and a half years. So still a learning process, learning from a bunch of buddies, learning from a lot of the background backyard growers here in Los Angeles. Uh, everyone is so wonderful with. Um, ideas and tips and what they do so i just try to get all that information and apply it to my own plants you see this my sticker board with with the community oh yeah up there. who we got on there let's do a couple shout outs so we got big cactus rescue shout out automata and saint succulents of course obviously uh select a soul contrabando we got the Duke. OG, yeah, the Duke, OG Agave, Variegated Troy, Cactus Daddy, Naked City Ceramics, dude, Gnosis Nursery. Everybody's on there. Yeah. A whole ton of them. And the I Shed. Get, I have this experimental area. And then there is, that is Yuffie. That is my my little uh, resin char character. Yeah. Which the actual plant is right underneath the well with you. That is the inspiration for oh yeah that is yuffie young youth young youth yeah. young yuffie looks thirsty dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i've been neglecting these guys for the winter months so they're getting they're getting a little thirsty they, they might get some water if when it gets really warm or warmer is this that pachycormus that you got that one day yeah. after the thing yeah that's the pachycormus i found over um at grigsby's dude that's yeah sweet, man. that's it's a nice one yeah, I was down at uh, Botanic Wonders recently hanging out with Anthony, and he was showing me, like, uh, some of the plants, like, some of the some of the different things, like the bursaras and the different um, focarias, I want to say, that, dude, th they were just clipping them and clipping them and clipping them and clipping them. feeding you and feeding you and feeding you and feeding you. So it was, like, yeah. not even a foot tall. Really? But uh, they were so. Which this here is that? Which one? The, this operculocaria that you have? Yeah. Is that which one is that? Uh, Decarii. That's that's from that's from uh, Botanic. Yeah, like look how knobby their Decarii are, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know? they, they just really know that plant really well, and they grow them extremely well. Oh yeah, definitely. But yeah, they get really knobby. I mean, I thought it was a um, a packy. I thought it was a. You know, not a Dakarii, because it looks, because yeah. of the novels. Yeah, totally. I mean, it looks like that. Yeah, yeah they just gave me a, uh, it's a Dakarii hyphenoides. Oh, cool. Nice. Hybrid, which is pretty cool. So hopefully, you know, it'll, I'm going to start, I'm going to start chopping it too. Sweet. Like, just like that. Just chop, 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 chop. Yeah, chop. this is, this is the first one he gave me. Anthony gave me this, and he kind of like, you know, these guys are like, the drug dealers they'll give you a little taste and then you get addicted to it and so 100 <laughs> uh, percent. yeah so what's your favorite genus Ooh, or what's it's a your tough one. a couple of few favorite genuses i mean i, I, think, mean, I, I, I feel I, like i can sort of guess yeah you kind of guess that uh turbini carpus is my sort of like my main goal every time i walk by one i have to take it home 
And then um, Areocarpus, of course, different types, the Fusuratus, and the different types of um, forms of the Retusis. And then I love the hybrids now that everyone's making. Um, these are hybrids that are just like cross between Fis and, and Retusis. This is another Retusis. Yeah, that one's um, good. Here's another hybrid. Here's here's a, a, a lovely, nice size fist dude, that's that starting is gorgeous, to spiral. Dude, look how flat it is. Yeah. And then I don't know what's going on with this Retusis, but maybe he's dichotomizing or he's just fat and oval. But we'll see when he gets older. Then of course I love the um, the Godzillas, you know, that are really hard to get here. Here's one form, and then there's another couple forms over there, but. Since they, they've pretty much locked down imports, it's hard to get them these days. Oh my goodness, dude, that guy's blue and juicy. Yeah, that's an old loaf. And then um, I'm into, so a lot of a lot of cactus that I like to collect are northern Mexican cactus, yeah. just because they do really well here. So you'll see I, I have a lot of pelicyphers and different forms, the straboli. Uh, forms and then you know different types of loaves. There's a double. Is that a crested one? The Pelisophora? Which right one? Here? No, that's that's just a regular. Oh, this one? Yeah, that is a crested version. Oh, yeah, crap. that little tiny dude. That's crazy. Yeah, and then here's a double double head strobole form. So that's awesome, dude. Yeah, those are the guys that I. I just like them because they're small and they're really interesting. They're just like little tiny works of art. Yeah, I've started getting a little more into like uh, lately. Like I just, I've been getting into winter growers. Mm -hmm. Go figure, it's winter yeah. time, yeah. you know. Yeah, and like Tylacodons are all, yeah. those, those guys are all in. The Walichi well. eye. I just, well, I just yeah. potted up some Tylacodons. Oh, this is awesome. This is Reticulatus. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I think I bought it as is, as a reticulatus, but I think uh, it is. My, my, uh, Mike was like, "Oh, that that doesn't look like it might be some sort of hybrid of some sort." So we were we were just kind of comparing. Um, just so here's this shelf is basically all the turbs mm -hmm. um, of all this different. This is crazy. Yeah, that's a crazy one. And then this one's this one's a really interesting because it's a clinkery and it has a. Lefafroides like sort of embedded into the roots of that one. That's like a little hitchhiker. Dude, this guy right here is hysterical, man. Looks yeah. sort of like... So you could see where he got damaged right here. So then there's pups growing from that <laughs> area. so funny looking. So those pups just appeared this this last grow season, last last summer. And then you got this guy who's just... who's, who's He's a little confused. He's, he's flowering. Yeah? yeah? Why not? Why not? Here's another guy that I got from Dada Gonzalez. And so this kind of broke during the uh, shipping. Yeah. But you could see what that created. All these little tiny little pups yeah, are totally. starting to to appear from the, the You can't keep side. a good cactus down. No, no. They <laughs> they just uh, they want to survive. <laughs> it's just it's just it's growing like a stacker out of the top of its uh, apex there. I think it got damaged by something, by pests or something back in the day. Crazy. That's uh, Barquatensis? Mm -hmm. Copia poa hypogea Barquatensis. Yeah, and they will survive, so. Dude, you know, every time I come to a, a greenhouse where people have it like completely decked out and everything's potted, it definitely makes me like want to uh, pot up more of my stuff. It does yeah. take it does take room though. That's the problem. And so I have all these guys in nursery pots, and it's you know, it's obvious that you could just squeeze as, as much and maximize as much room as possible. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm hard pressed for space. Like if I were to repot even one bench, I'd almost need another greenhouse. It's like yeah. So this is I just started getting into conophytums, and so this one came. This is a Hershey's Kiss. I I put this on my story earlier, and it's just really interesting because it. It has like this sort of rainbow effect to it, off to the sides. Oh uh, yeah, almost like a like 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 yeah like a rainbow trout or something. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. But yeah, conophytums are like the new things that I'm just starting to discover. You know, it's it's one of those things where you get bored of one thing and then you find something that else that interests you and that becomes a new obsession. And you yeah, know, I did that with mammalarias. 
Yeah. Yeah, because, um, you know, I was like, dude, the prices of Copia Poe's were getting so ridiculously high that I was like, all right, let me try to find something else that I like that is cool and at yeah. least to me anyway because really at the end of the day it's just that's the only thing that really oh, matters totally I mean, so I went on like on a whole bender trying to get all the white ones like uh-huh. Herere Humboldtii uh-huh. um, Pseudopectinatus uh, Perbella all those yeah you're Lenta. living with them so yeah here's a little here's some mammalarias some little tiny mammals here these guys um, and then I, you know the one there. thing about Animal areas when they grow bigger, they just start taking up a lot more space. So these are like the last few that I kept in my collection. I sold a quite a others. There's some up there. Um, you know, I just like the way they, they they dichotomize. And this guy's still flowering. And actually, he just started he just started pushing out some fruit. Little chilies. Well, the good thing about all those small white ones is that they're super slow growing, and they never get all that big. So you have plenty of uh, plenty and plenty of time. Yeah. So the, one of the other things that I added with the climate with the fans was the speed control, which is really cool. So that's on its own thermostat as well. But then I could make it, I could calm it down and l- let it go a little bit slower with the servo or speed it up. Nice. Depending on the the heat. So yeah. Everything's Sweet, a little, little electronically controlled. And then, of course, I have my, um, this is my Wi-Fi extender, because I do lots of my, my posts from here. Yeah. Yeah. And then one of the later additions was this work table, because everything else, like, took space. Right. Um, so this is where you stage and... This is where I stage and put things Im- together. It's impeccably clean in here. I, I, <laughs> I seem to recall when we were in, in the uh, kitchen before we came out here, you were saying like, oh, it's kind of unkept. I haven't really been keeping up with it. I'm looking at it, dude, and oh. I'm thinking to myself, what the heck? Are you serious? <laughs> Let me get back so you can see the whole thing in its entirety. Yeah, so I mean, this is, I made this so I could actually push it down and it just articulates down. And makes more room, or then just spit, puts comes back up, and then I could just start putting stuff on it, and pot, yeah. and stage, and do stuff. So you know, you're gonna you're gonna inspire a lot of people, and give you're gonna give That's a lot cool. of people a lot of really cool ideas. Dude, this yeah, is- I hope so. You know, I just saw Tony was uh, building his greenhouse, and that looks amazing. You know, I just yeah. want everybody to you know have a space for their their collection. I mean, we put some money into it, and then. It's great to see other pe- people's spaces, uh, yeah. like Alex's space. Uh, shout out to Cactus Update. I'm wearing one of his shirts today. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Alex, Cactus Update. We sa- you will be sadly missed in January. We, uh, hopefully uh, you can make it out to L.A. very, very soon, though. Um, well, dude, thank you so much for, for uh, setting aside time on a rainy day to hang out with little old me and show me around the greenhouse. No, my and really- pleasure show the uh the whole world around the greenhouse yeah. is there anything you want to show anybody or show off or anybody mm-hmm. you want to talk shit about before <laughs> before we end the video i'm kidding uh, of course but plant- any any final words of wisdom just plants are the way i relax and you know uh, there is a great community here in southern california and outside on the west coast but i'm just a, uh, you know enjoy the plants uh let go of the drama and uh everybody have a good time On that note, all right, brother, it's time to get back to the studio. All right, thank you.